All right. But I shouldn't be here much longer. It's just a cup of tea. When she said that, the pot started steaming and whistling as she turned it to take it off the heat, turning the stove off. She poured the boiling water over the tea bag and set the cup on the saucer to steep as she sat the pot down on the counter. Now a tray. She went to a rack where a few silver servings were stacked. That will do. She got a disc dishcloth from the drawer near the sink and wiped down the silver until it shined. She then sat down with the cup and saucer placing two lemon wedges on the side of the cup along with a small container of honey and one of warm milk. Hope it's worse. She sighed as she picked up the tray. I'll see you later, Cedric. She smiled to him. See you at dinner, Lexi. He returned her smile before leaving the kitchen. She did the same with one last look around to be sure she had cleaned up after herself. She ascended the stairs, her black skirt swaying as she walked back to the ballroom where the master still remained. She opened the door, pushing the heavy oak aside. He heard her enter this time, and stopped the music short as he turned to scowl at her once again. You have returned. Why? He demanded. It's tea time, she said simply as she walked to the organ. I thought a simple cup of tea would be good for you. I even brought some lemon wedges, honey, and warm milk, but because I wasn't sure what you would prefer. He was quiet for a moment, and then an exasperated groan left him as he shook his head. Such nonsense. Lemon is fine. Honey, it makes it too sweet. Maybe if he took the tea, she'd leave him in peace. Then you need to come with me if you would, because there is no place to set this tray down. Perhaps the sunroom? The view in there might inspire you further. No offense, Master, but you have been playing the same string of notes for the past two days. It is rather monotonous. Such big words for a maid. He looked at her dress and then back to her face. Are you educated? Self-taught, sir. She smiled. But that is a story for another time. You need to relax, sir. The tea will help. Very well. He rose from his place in front of the organ. Hmm. What day is it, sir? What day is it, girl? Saturday, sir. Oh. So it really has been three days. He looked at the grandfather clock at the back of the massive room. That thing must need winding. It's not ticking, so I lost track of time. Again. That is unhealthy, sir, she frowned. You shouldn't spend so much time in one room. Please come with me. She turned to walk back to the door. Wait, you said the sunroom. She faced him. Yes, sir. That room has a broken window. There could be still be glass on the floor. I, I don't want to get, I don't want you getting hurt, so let's just go to the balcony. It's much closer and the view is almost the same. As you wish, sir. Lead the way. Had it worked? Had he volunteered to lead? He had volunteered to leave the room. He descended the few stairs that lay up the old organ and went to a glass door opening it and walking out on the stone balcony holding the door open for her. Well, you insisted now, come on. He waved a hand for to follow him outside. She obeyed, stepping out in the slight breeze. There was a metal table and a few chairs set up. She set the tea down on the table. You really should drink this while it's hot. Still hot. 
She picked out one of the lemon wedges and squeezed its juice into the cup. Please sit down. He did. As she sat the cup and saucer in front of him, he took the cup, taking a sip. Mm. Where'd you learn to make tea? Uh, Allie, is it? Alexia, sir. You can call me Lexi if you wish. And I've learned that and a few other things from browsing through cookbooks in the library in town. I see. So that's what you meant by self-taught. He took a sip. Sit down. I want to talk to you. You seem to be new here. She sat across from him, wondering if she had done something wrong. Lexi. A smile came to his face. Why did you apply to be made here? You clearly have the brains to be much more. She frowned. I guess because every other job I applied for either wanted experience, which I do not have, or a degree, which I, again, do not have. She sighed. So I settled for this until I could get one of those things. I see you. He gave her a slight nod. What was it that you wanted to do? I wanted to be a nurse, to work with the sick and disabled. My father was a doctor, so I'm used to the, the mess that comes with it. But that is no place for a lady, blood and gore. He shook his head. Perhaps something else? But that is what I want to do, sir, she frowned. I'm saving up to go to school to do just that. Well, you show me today that you have the backbone to do as you see fit. He smirked. I suppose Cedric told you not to bother me? He did, yes. She laid a hand on the wrist he grabbed. He hadn't hurt her, just startled her. But I couldn't stand the sight of you locked away in that room, no matter how big that room is, for days at a time, especially when the house is so big. Why not take a walk once in a while? I own the house, this mansion. I've seen every inch of it from front to back, because I was there when my father built, had it built, when I was a child. He set the cup down, but it wasn't quite done with it yet. Oh. But still, why not? It will be good exercise. What's the point? I'm quite fit as it is. He laid a hand on his flat stomach. Sir, no offense, but that flat stomach is from you not eating enough. He groaned. You've been talking to the cook too, haven't you? No, sir. Haven't met yet. Have yet to meet, actually. Well, then, you might have to go introduce yourself. If you make tea this... Like this every day, I might make you a kitchen maid rather than the one who does the dusting. Whatever you wish, sir. The two fell silent as she looked out to the mansion's overgrown gardens. The gardeners have been slacking after the recent rain. The flowers were in bloom, yes, but they were overrun with weeds. I should get back to my duties. She rose from, rose from her seat. If you'll excuse me, I will not. He looked up to her. I'm quite enjoying your company. Please sit down. She took back her seat. Yes, sir. You said you wanted to be a nurse. What brought this on? He was now curious about the young woman who was in front of him. But was that curiosity enough to keep him from that cursed organ long enough to get a meal and some rest? I'm not sure exactly. I guess it's because that's what my father did, and I really admired him when I was a child. I see. What about your mother? What does she think of her little girl going to a man's profession? She frowned, looking to the table in front of her. Sir, my mother died during childbirth. I... I never met her. He suddenly felt guilty for asking that. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. 
It's all right, but my father raised me alone and worked that job, so I would want for nothing. To be able to go do that, to me, was beyond amazing. If he could bring health back to so many people, and then come home and then help his then five-year-old daughter make dinner, then he was a great man. Indeed. He sounds like an upright gentleman. He smiled. Where is he now? St. Luke's Hospital, probably working the day shift. So he's still alive? He raised an eyebrow. Yes, quite, she nodded. We don't live together, but because I thought it was time I set out on my own. Then I got this temporary job as a maid in this house, and I hope this would last at least until I get my medical degree. He chuckled. Actually chuckled for the first time in months. You're a brave girl. And a smart one, too. You're sure to succeed in whatever you choose. He finished his tea inside. I suppose you're not going to let me return to my work. She shook her head. No, sir, I must insist that you rest first. You'll be refreshed and you can start from where you left off in the morning. All right, fine. I seem to be stuck on the same few notes anyway. He left the seat, leaving the cup and saucer. She got up and took her di used dishes and re replaced them on the tray before picking it up. Shall we go back inside, sir? Yes, let's go. Perhaps you're right. I should get a shower and go to bed, and at least for a little while. I advise you rest at least until dinner. She walked to the door, which had been left open. No matter, it will probably still help air out the musty ballroom. Then I'll see you at dinner, then. You're excused. He left the balcony and for once didn't stop at the old organ. Going past it, headed for the door. Cedric happened to be dusting the pictures on that floor when the master emerged. His eyes widened as he saw the master, but no Lexi. What had happened to the girl? Was she in the room crying with a broken wrist? Or worse, had he... But then, she followed him out, bearing the same silver tray she had left the kitchen with. So it had been a success. A smile crept across his face. She had actually done it. The master had actually left the ballroom. As he saw them going in their separate ways, he walked beside Alexia. What? How did you do that so easily? Simple. A cup of tea and a good conversation. She smiled. I asked him to come to the ball, to the sunroom room with me. He said there was still broken glass in there from a broken window, so we went to the balcony and talked for a bit while he drank his tea. I also learned that he doesn't like anything in his tea except a little bit of lemon juice. That's amazing. He was very impressed. This was your first day even speaking to the master, and you not only had a full conversation with him, but got him to leave that damn ballroom for the first time this week. Sometimes hot tea, you know, has a narcoleptic effect. Especially when the person you're drinking hasn't slept in several days. I thought some rest and food would help him, so he agreed to a shower and didn't sleep until dinner. He stood in front of her, st stopping her. You still haven't answered my question. How? Simple. I am just as stubborn as he is. He knows this, and would rather not challenge me. At the moment, anyway. This could all backfire at any moment. She walked around him. Now I should return to where I found them. Return these to where I found them. And with that, she returned to the kitchen with Cedric still at her side.